Windows 10 is the most versatile and feature-packed operating system that Microsoft has ever released. That's not to say it's not without its flaws. Coming up, I'll go over the settings in several categories you should consider changing to improve your overall experience with Windows 10. Let's get started. In Windows 10, there are two user interface options to access settings. There's the control panel, which should be familiar to longtime users, and there's the newer settings app, which first appeared in Windows 8. Since Microsoft is very slowly phasing out the control panel, I'll show you how to navigate to each of these settings in each segment, either using the settings app or the search box located in the taskbar. First, we'll take a look at the Windows Update settings, which is the first thing I change after a fresh install. For those of you that are new to Windows 10, there are several ways to open the settings app. The most common way is to left click the start menu and select the settings icon. The quickest way to open settings is to use the keyboard shortcut, which is the Windows key plus the letter I. From here to get to the Windows Update settings, choose Update and Security here at the bottom. Make sure that you're in the Windows Update tab. Click on Change Active Hours. Putting a start and end time in here, your PC won't automatically restart during the active hours you set and won't restart without notifying you first. Click Save when you're done. Now click on Advanced Options. Give me updates for other Microsoft products when I update Windows. Turn this one on if you want other Microsoft products like Office to be updated at the same time. I usually leave Automatically Download Updates turned off. That way I know it won't be conflicting with other downloads that I have running. For the next one down, will show a reminder when we're going to restart. It's best to leave this one turned on. There's nothing worse than your computer restarting at the worst possible time. Below that, click on Delivery Optimization. Microsoft claims this feature will speed up the process of getting updates if you have an unreliable internet connection. It does this by allowing downloads from other PCs instead of Microsoft servers. Being a cynic, Using this torrent-style approach could be a clever way for Microsoft to pass off its bandwidth responsibilities, which could possibly leave you with a higher bandwidth bill. This is one I turn off immediately. You should check this setting periodically. I've noticed that sometimes it turns itself back on automatically. If your PC is misbehaving due to a bad driver or for any other reason, it's best to restore your computer to a previous state. Some people have reported that system protection was turned off by default on their PCs. You will want to turn this on. For this one, go to your search box and type Restore Point. Click on Create a Restore Point. You should be in the System Protection tab. In Protection Settings, select your boot drive, which for most people usually is the C drive. With it highlighted, click on Configure. Now make sure that Turn On System Protection is enabled. For maximum disk space usage, I recommend that it's set to no less than 5 GB. Currently, I have mine set at around 13 GB, which is 3%, to allow for more restore points. If you make any changes, click on Apply, and then OK to exit this window. And OK again to close System Properties. If you don't like using the default programs in Windows 10, you can easily change those using the Settings app. On the Settings home screen, select Apps. In the left pane, click on Default Apps. You can change the defaults for Email, Maps, Music Player, Photo Viewer, Video Player, and Web Browser. Let's change the browser. Click on Microsoft Edge. Edge is good, but it's not as feature-packed as others. If you have a preferred browser already installed on your PC, just select it from the list. And that's all there is to it for changing the default apps. If you feel that you're receiving too many notifications and they're driving you crazy, you should change your notification settings. On the Settings home screen, select System. In the left pane, click on Notifications and Actions. Scroll down a bit, 
For the general notification settings, I turn off all of these listed, except for get notifications from apps and other senders. Scrolling down a bit more, you can toggle on or off whether you want to receive notifications from these senders. So just turn off the ones that you don't want notifications from. Clicking on a sender brings up even more settings for that individual sender. Let's say that you still want notifications from a sender, but don't want to hear a sound when the notification arrives. You would just need to turn off, play a sound when a notification arrives. And you can also change that sender's notification priority in the Action Center. Choices are top, high, and normal. By default, Microsoft will hide certain files, folders, and file extensions. If you want to make those visible, type Hidden Files in the search box. Click Show Hidden Files and Folders. You should be in the View tab. Down in Advanced Settings, toggle on where it says Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives. And then uncheck Hide Extensions for Known File Types. When you're done, hit Apply, and then OK to close out the window. If you're ever forced to restart your PC due to excessive lag to clear out the system memory, Windows will automatically reopen the programs that weren't shut down prior to rebooting. Doing so will tie up resources when your system restarts. There's a better way. On the Settings home screen, click on Accounts. Select Sign In Options in the left pane. Now scroll down to the Privacy section and toggle off where it says Use my sign-in info to automatically finish setting up my device and reopen my apps after an update or restart. Having this turned off, you can just open up the programs that you need after your system has loaded. In this video, I've been showing you how to navigate to a few of the settings using the search box, which Microsoft calls the Cortana search box. If you're looking to free up more space on your taskbar, right-click in any of the empty space, move your cursor up to Cortana, you have three choices. Show search box is the active setting. Show Cortana icon will remove the search box, leaving the Cortana icon. And selecting hidden will completely remove Cortana from your taskbar. You can still search by right-clicking the start menu and selecting search. While we're on the subject of Cortana, let's dive into those settings. Select the settings icon. Turn off let Cortana respond to to stop it from always listening. And if you don't want Cortana on your lock screen, turn off Use Cortana even when my device is locked. Windows 10 is the most invasive operating system in terms of privacy that Microsoft has ever created. But there are ways to reduce what information they have on you. In the Settings app, select Privacy. In the General Settings, there are four switches. Just turn them all off. You don't need any of these turned on for your system to run properly. I'll go over some optional settings that you might want to turn off. In Speech, Inking, and Typing, you can turn off Speech Services and Typing Suggestions. Read the Getting to Know You description to determine if this is something you want to do. In Location, leaving Location Service on will allow apps to access your location. Scrolling down the page, you can choose which apps have access to your location. Back in the left pane, selecting Account Info, you can choose whether to allow apps to have access to your account information, along with which individual apps get access to that information. If you run into any issues with these optional settings after making any changes, just switch them back. There may be times when you get a new PC or hook up a new monitor that the scaling is out of whack on your screen where the text, programs, and icons are quite a bit larger than you would like. If you've had this happen, you will want to change this immediately. The easiest way to do this is to right-click on your desktop and select Display Settings. On the screen, scroll down and find Scale and Layout. Where it says Change the Size of Text, Apps, and Other Items, select the drop-down arrow Start out at 100%. If your vision is not so great, it might be better for you to increase this to a larger percentage. And while we're here, you might as well turn on the nightlight. Your eyes will thank you later. Going into the nightlight settings, you can adjust the color temperature and set a schedule of either sunset to sunrise or set your own hours. 
Now let's look at the personalization settings that make Windows 10 easier to look at. Once again, right click on your desktop and select Personalize. In the left pane, select Colors. Here you can choose to automatically pick an accent color based on your background or choose one of the many colors listed below. Scrolling down here a bit, check the box for Start, Taskbar, and Action Center and the box for Title Bars to add some more color to your life. Just below that, a setting I always change right away when getting a new PC is the default app mode. With the new installation of Windows, it's usually set to light, but I find dark is easier on the eyes. In the left pane, select Themes. Choosing a new theme is a quick way to change the overall look and feel of your PC. They usually include wallpapers for your background, new color schemes, and sometimes they change the sound scheme and mouse cursor. The theme I'm currently using is Bridging the Gap. To find more themes, just simply click the link that says Get More Themes in Microsoft Store. There's a ton of themes to choose from. Most are free, while some have a minimal cost. To keep the garbage on your PC from piling up and to save space, you should enable Storage Sense. On the home screen in the Settings app, select System. Then click on Storage in the left pane. Here to the right, you can turn on Storage Sense here, but first click Change How We Free Up Space Automatically. Toggle it on. Now Storage Sense will run automatically when your disk space is running low. Or you could hit the drop down arrow to have it run every day, week, or month. I prefer every month. Below in Temporary Files, you can have it delete files in your recycle bin along with files in your downloads folder. I'll set the recycle bin to 14 days and the downloads folder to 30 days. You can also click the Clean Now button to run this utility at any time. If you don't want to use the Microsoft OneDrive storage app, which comes pre-installed in Windows 10, there is no quick and easy way for the average user to uninstall it. But you can easily disable it to make it disappear. In the system tray, right-click the OneDrive icon. Select Settings. Make sure that you're in the Account tab. I don't plan to unlink OneDrive, but if you do, click Unlink This PC. To the left of the Account tab, select Settings. If you don't plan to link another account with OneDrive, you would want to uncheck the box to the left of Start OneDrive Automatically when I sign into Windows. Also, depending on your situation, you may want to uncheck both boxes here in Notifications. You most likely are familiar with the User Account Control Security feature that helps to prevent unauthorized changes to the operating system. Lately, I've seen articles on popular technology websites showing how to disable the User Account Control. I highly recommend that you don't disable this feature. It's an added layer of security. Yes, the NAG screen can be annoying, but it's better than the alternative of having your PC compromised. Type UAC in the search box. Click Change User Account Control Settings. If you have the slider set to Never Notify, you should probably change the setting right now, unless you're looking for trouble. The lowest setting I recommend is the default. But if you tend to install a lot of new software and visit unfamiliar sites, it would probably be best if you chose the highest setting. Better safe than sorry, as they say. When you're done making your changes, click on OK. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if it's useful for you. What settings do you change immediately when setting up your new PC? Let us know about it in the comments. If you haven't done so already, be sure to share this video with others, subscribe, and ring the bell notification icon so you don't miss out on the latest tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.